G is telling us he has had enough of the bumpy roads and that he wants some dinner. <laughs> that was a pretty interesting drive up, wasn't it, Curdy? Yeah, through the canopy trees, it was really pretty. There was places where it kind of got tossy turny. Towards the end, it got a really kind of sketch, but... Yeah, Kurt had to get out and do a walk ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are at a camp for the night. Yeah, and... there's a pretty river here, and yeah, we're in the nature. Good morning, everyone. We are off. Getting a little bit of a late starting start this morning. It's about 8.30. But we stayed up here close to the, the ranger station. It's actually about a two-mile hike to the trailhead. But we tried to get up here on the road, and it's just too crazy. I'll show you when we get up here. But we're going up on this volcano... And we're going to show you, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to get up to a glacier. So, I already know from where we're parked in the drive up that there are some amazing spots. I've already told you the leaves are starting to change colors a little bit. So, let's enjoy a day in the nature, huh? So, right here is where that tree fell across that little slot canyon. So, if we come down here, it kind of forms a natural bridge. You can see the canyon down in there, and I can hear a waterfall. It's a little dark down there, and it's a long drop. <laughs> And I haven't even started the hike, so caution is the word. We're not crossing that thing. We're sticking to the trail. <laughs> All right, this part of the road's pretty steep. And this is the part that we just can't do in the van. We've done stuff like this before, but we don't need to do it. You can see it's rocky and rolly. And these holes are just super steep. Look at this one. You can see car probably bottomed out right there spun their tires so really really bad shape and I think this road actually turns into more like this on the way up so we haven't seen any cars go up here I do see a fair to few tire tracks but not gonna do it in the van today guys just not gonna do it look at this That's a bad road. All right, I made it to the ranger station. Couple details. We're headed up right here to this glacier, Panachu. <laughs> I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right. It looks like we have about a three and a half mile hike with about 500 meters of elevation gain. They're giving me three and a half hours to do it. I don't know, we'll see. So there was no one at the ranger station I stopped by and uh, to check in, this is a solo hike. Uh, it's marked as medium, so it should be okay for me. And we're gonna get started right here up the thing. And it looks like the road is bad. There's all sorts of signs warning how bad these roads are. And you can see right here, this bridge is busted up. Now it looks like the underlying trees are big and solid. So I don't think you're gonna fall through this bridge. I think the van would make it, but I think it would be scary and not worth it. I would not let us cross the bridge. The, the the bridge in in our van kind of walking through some shrubby forest and you can see the leaves are starting to turn orange and some of them even red a little scrub 
hopefully in the coming weeks we'll catch peak autumn leaf change in season and hopefully we'll be in the right spot we never know if I'm being honest when I found out a big piece of the trail or the first maybe half of the trail is on a road I was disappointed like a trail but the nice thing about hiking on a tr road especially when there's no cars up here is it's wide so it broadens your range to be able to see the forest and whatever lies ahead and we're so far remote up in here my sounds and the sounds of the forest the crickets the birds the river the breeze in the treetops my footsteps and my breath is about all I hear this big tall tree right here captured another falling tree that was taller and you can see how it fell against the branches and never fell all the way but over time the branches of this tree grew around that tree like it's kind of cradling it it's really cool the road just keeps getting more interesting so the water right through here is cut oh i'm going to tell you that's at least 18 to 24 inches two feet down through the middle of this and by the way in some places as you can see the river just cuts completely across the road so you gotta navigate through or around it and if there gets to be any water on these types of roads these these river cuts through here they'll just pull your tires down in them so they'll just totally move so you can try to stay out of them when it's dry like this you can kind of hold your own but when it's wet you're at the mercy of this of this mountain just got done with a little break we're about a mile and a half in and i looked up and saw look at this this is a monkey tree and we've seen these before but didn't know what they are i looked up and i see some more up there but this is not a hike about monkeys this is about glaciers we got about another half a mile up to the trailhead and it looks like we still have about another three miles to go so i thought going into this it might be a three and a half hour trail i actually think it's three and a half hours each way not sure let you guys know but we got to get moving we got a long way to go and we'll tell you this has been pretty steep throughout there's been little flat spots but here for quite a bit we're we're going on up so it looks like the inside of this tree is charred or something maybe it got struck by lightning or some maybe knucklehead built a fire down there who knows it's a big tree and then over here they got some kind of i don't know ceremonial thing they got it surrounded by logs and benches and then there's kind of this statue in the middle it looks like there's donations there and maybe it looks like there's also bird seed there so maybe it's a donation point for people leaving money for bird seed or maybe the seeds are an offering i'm not sure i don't know what that is but... some folks argue politics till it drives them mad some folks let their problems shine wear them like a badge but not me my friend no not me my friend no no not me not me we all got to die and when it's my time i'm gonna die living die living 
So put me on a jet airplane And take me to a foreign place And fall in love with the stranger's face I will Show me something I ain't seen Take me someplace I ain't been I got my music in my old six string And I will, I will Die living Die living Die living <laughs> There's a speed limit sign here for 20 kilometers per hour and uh I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go that fast, guys. But I just was kind of doing some math in my head as I continued to climb and climb. This is my first reprieve in a long time. But I should be coming down real close to the trailhead. But I didn't really consider this as part of the hike when I sort of did my analysis. And so the three and a half hour hike applies probably round trip once I get to the trailhead and so right now we're probably approaching an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes let's just say rough math two hours to get to the trailhead uh, it'll be down so it'll be quicker so say an hour back so three hours um, unanticipated all that and we just now are making it to the trailhead. <laughs> All right, guys. The legs are still in good shape. I'm going to push on. I'm going to try to hurry through it, though, because it's going to take me longer than we had discussed earlier. Although we did know there was a little bit still up in the air. But I don't want snow to worry about me. But as I come down into this opening, look at this. A glacier. I don't know if that's 4.2 kilometers. Or 42. <laughs> At this point in time, I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And this is Puma Country. Been walking for a while, my feet are getting tired, my heart's a little heavy, but you keep me going. Been walking for a while, mile after mile, my soul's a little weary, but you keep me going, you keep me going. Trails narrowing just a bit. Been walking for a while, wandering in the wild. You're holding me steady. Yeah, you keep me going. Been walking for a while, following the fire. Your spirit is within me, and it keeps me going.
It's taken me about two and a half hours, but I emerged above the tree line. And as I was coming up over these mountains, I was reminded of when we were in Torres del Paine and we were learning about the pumas that they like the perches where they can sit up on the hill, kind of tucked away. So as you're coming up, you can't see them. So anyway, we're definitely on the lookout for Puma. Nice little breeze up here. The last of the monkey trees. And here you can see sort of the mountain range and how it's been cut away over time. And up there, well, I suppose there's a glacier somewhere up there. I don't see any snow or ice. So hopefully it's still there. And the further I get away from the trees, the more this place just comes open and barren. Where is that glacier? Be there. Sooner or later, when you're climbing a volcano, this is what it looks like. Uh, and right here, we have first signs of the glacier above. There's a little stream, a little river coming down. And that would be water off of that, off of that glacier. I just looked at uh, my app. It says I still have 1.4 miles to go. So, yeah. We don't have the shade of the trees. It's a little bit cloudy. Temperature is perfect. It's gotta be around 65 or 70. So from here, I can see a little bit of the glacier up there on the volcano. I think that's the top bit of the glacier. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the bottom bit's a lot closer. Uh, you're not gonna believe this, but I've been following this river up for a while, this glacier river. And I look up there and I see a rickety bridge. It's looking like we might have a river crossing. So, the landscape up here is surreal. On my right, on the hillside, a little grass is able to take hold. A little tiny patches here where I am now. And off to the left, it's just nothing but rubble, rocks, whatever blasted out of that volcano and cut through here. And I'm still having a hard time grasping how far we are from that glacier. And there it is. I can see it. The glacier, the face of the glacier. Can you guys see it? It's sort of some mountain peaks below the volcano there. And the top is kind of black or whatever gray. And you can see on the front where it's a little bit white or even maybe a shade of blue. That's ice. We're getting there. <laughs> the volcano just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Woo! -hoo! The sign down there at the ranger station is indeed accurate. It was a three and a half hour hike up here. So pretty long. I still have a ways to go to get to the ice. This is the sign, sort of the mirror door, but I guess maybe the glacier retreats sometimes or something but there's clearly a trail so let's go up there and see if we can touch this ice I feel like everyone who comes by here should put a rock on here goes mine
my lands. It's huge, guys. It's absolutely huge. It goes all the way over there, around to the left. And if you look over here to the right, it's just huge. The problem is, see this river right here that runs along this glacier? Well, I kind of been following it up, uh, the trail has, but the trail's kind of stopped. And now there's remnants of footprints and stuff. So people definitely come up here, but I can't get to the ice unless I can get around the rivers. And if you look right here, there's just rivers all around from this glacier. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get to that ice. So I kind of kept running into dead ends. So I popped the drone up real quick and quickly found out that the way the rivers come down around this glacier, I'm kind of up in a little peninsula. I can't get to any ice without crossing a river. So I will not be doing that. But also learned that this glacier is extremely vast. And I would have never guessed it. And you can see it's got sort of the lava dust or charcoal or whatever it is on top of it that gives it that black tent. But you can see the waves of the glacier as it goes through, the signature kind of waves that it makes. And it's certainly on the front, you can see uh, the ice. And we can even pick up some blues. The sun's not perfect for it right now. But the glacier is so huge and stunning. And again, I'm just blown away with nature and the power and the force and the fury as all these rivers come down here and all these volcanoes scatter the skyline around me. All things good come to an end though. It's time to head on back down. It took a lot longer to get up here than I anticipated. Three and a half hours. Let's see if we can do that on the way down. All right, guys, I made it back to the van and I thought snow would have this thing pointed towards the road, ready to go, worrying about these rains wanting to get down. So let's see if I called it right. For the first time ever, I timed the after hike meal within five minutes of Kirk getting back. He's got tacos waiting on him. Look at that, delicious. <laughs> nice and hot. The veggies are just cut. Normally I blow the timing, but not this time. The kitties have had an extremely lazy day. Kurt just ate three giant tacos faster than I've ever seen in the history of the world. I edited two videos today. Faster than anyone in the history of the world. <laughs> And it is raining. We had thought about sleeping up here, but we've got some bad road to go over. And if it rains all night, that road will get worse. So we're going to head down the mountain a little bit to another little riverside camp. You all right to drive? As if there wasn't enough drama today. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Bumpy roads. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.